Modern aircraft are marvels of human technological progress and represent a nation's air superiority and military might. The current fifth generation of fighters are complex and sophisticated machinery designed to be a significant improvement over the earlier fourth or four plus generation of fighters which dominates most of a country's air forces. Developed after spending billions of dollars and years of research, the fifth generation type of fighter was first deployed by the United States Air Force in the form of the F-22 Raptor and later the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter. But they're not alone in fielding a fifth generation fighter anymore. China has developed its Chengdu J-20 or the Mighty Dragon and Russia with their Sukhoi Su-57 which saw combat action recently over Syria. With these new fighter jets out of the design phase and being actively produced, you can bet that the military-industrial complex of various countries has already begun work on the next generation of fighter aircraft, or better known as the sixth generation fighter. So what makes up a sixth generation fighter jet? Because so many new technologies are top secret or classified concerning this new generation, there's little information about what this generation of fighter is going to be like, look like, and what kind of fantastic weapons it's going to have. However, we have some current information on some of them. Many countries are busy right now working on their sixth generation fighters, and we've been given a sneak peek at what's to come. So far, some aircraft manufacturers have released small amounts of information, including artists' renderings of projects that are in the works to the public. There are also a couple of sixth-generation fighter jets that have full-sized mock-ups. One thing we can be sure of is that this will build upon the improvements of the fifth-generation fighters and will definitely include technologies like all-aspect stealth, supercruise, thrust vectoring, and advanced data links. On top of that, it'll also feature advancements in radar-absorbing coating materials, improved IR suppressants or thermal signature management, evolved radar-eluding configurations, and acoustic reduction technologies. These fighters are also rumored to feature larger airframes, more efficient and more powerful engines, to be unveiled as early as 2028. They'll also be equipped with visual range missiles and have the ability to protect themselves against newer surface-based missile defenses. However, what becomes most interesting is the significant major technological leaps needed to take place in order to separate these aircraft from their previous generations. Aircraft generations, as they're called, are used to classify separate categories for major technological leaps in the history of jet fighter development. However, there are no hard and fast rules when it comes to defining an aircraft's generation. For example, fighter jets like Russia's Su-30s or United States F-A-18E Super Hornets are much more capable than the normal fourth-generation fighters. Thus, these jets are more accurately classified as 4.5 or 4-plus generation fighters, the major difference between them being the presence of an active electronically scanned radar, AESA, enhanced avionics, and the capacity for data linkages. Fifth generation, on the other hand, represents an enormous leap in stealth technology that's been made in recent years. Fifth generation fighters are characterized by the presence of all aspects stealth features, including the ability to carry weapons in internal bays to maintain that stealth. Also improved avionics, flight controls, maneuverability, and increased situational awareness. In recent years, a lot of research has been done in unmanned aerial vehicles and many believe that the next sixth generation jet fighter will be either completely unmanned or have the ability to have a pilot as per the mission requirement. Imagine fighter jets cruising the skies that are remotely controlled. That future looks like it's on its way soon. Some may also have the ability to operate in conjunction with other unmanned assets in the air and fight as a swarm of unmanned aerial vehicles to overwhelm enemy defenses. The advantages of unmanned aerial vehicles are quite obvious. With a UAV, air forces are not risking the lives of highly skilled pilots over enemy territories in combat missions, which can cause fatalities. Which means they can undertake very risky missions, which would be impossible for a piloted aircraft. Also, without the human factor involved, UAVs can fly much longer missions and can carry out continuous operational sorties at a moment's notice, without the problem of being tired or having to take downtimes in between missions. Three sixth-generation fighter concepts in the same line of thought have been released by the United States, United Kingdom, Germany, Spain and France. These fighter concepts utilize the unmanned feature in various degrees. 
Spain, France and Germany have already begun work on the new generation fighter or NGF, which is built in collaboration with Airbus Defence and Space Corporation and France's Dassault Aviation. This incredible new fighter jet will integrate next generation weapon systems by working together with unmanned wingmen in the form of autonomous drones such as the XQ-58A Valkyrie. Developed as a partnership between the Air Force Research Laboratory and Kratos Unmanned Aerial Systems that can fill electronic warfare, strike and surveillance roles. It'll be controlled by the piloted aircraft or operate on its own and can carry a small payload of bombs. It's possible it could carry missiles or other weapons increasing a pilot's total ordnance. The Loyal Wingman drone has a range of just under 2,500 miles and can fly out ahead of a fighter as a scout and it carries advanced sensor and communication suites to provide the pilot with a real-time picture of the battlefield. One of the major advantages is that it could take enemy fire in place of the piloted aircraft if things went bad quickly. And only costing two to three million dollars per vehicle, it's far more effective to have a drone take a hit instead of a 100 million dollar fighter jet. These drones will be connected to the new generation fighter and will share situational information with the pilot using high-speed data transfer from low Earth satellites. They'll also carry advanced sensors and communication suites to provide the pilot with a real-time picture of the battlefield. The only drawback to the XQ-58A Valkyrie is its speed, which tops out at 652 miles per hour, while the F-16 or F-22 can travel at 1500 miles per hour. China has also built their version of the wingman drone called the LJ-1, which looks amazingly like the US drone, the General Atomics MQ-9 Reaper. Unlike the other drones we just talked about, the LJ-1 can be set up to make a one-way trip with a high explosive payload which turns into a cruise missile. And it's designed to imitate third and fourth generation fighters, and under some circumstances, even fifth generation jets. It can function as a radar jammer, and it can be armed with many different missiles. One interesting thing to note about this drone is that it was on display at the MAX-29 Air Show at Zhukovsky Air Base in Russia in an effort to sell the design to interested countries. The NGF aircraft will also feature the next European fighter engine, which is currently under development by the MTU Aero Engines and Safran. The new generation fighter is intended to replace the fleet of Eurofighter Typhoons and FA-18 Hornets currently in service with these nations and operate alongside the F-35 Lightning II fighters. Similarly, the United States Navy and the United States Air Force have also released plans for their sixth generation fighter program named FAXX and FX respectively. The US Navy's FAXX program, dubbed as the Next Generation Air Dominance Fighter, is intended to replace the fleet of FA-18 Hornets by the mid-2030s. Not a whole lot is known about this program, but the Navy has opted for an open architecture design so that the aircraft can be reconfigured for different mission requirements. Moreover, it would have the ability to be flown as manned or without a pilot and should be able to mitigate land, air and sea threats equally. Such an approach, looking beyond isolated systems and weapons themselves, envisions expansive networked combat with war platforms operating as nodes in a larger warfare system of weapons and sensors working together in real time. On the opposite spectrum, the US Air Force's FX program, referred to as Penetrating Counter Air, will prioritize air to air superiority and will be designed to meet threats the current F 22 and F 15 Eagle cannot. The new platform will have a variety of new capabilities to achieve air superiority. Improvements will be made in the areas of basing and logistics, communications, intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance, command and control, as well as incorporating existing and future electronic warfare and weapons platforms like directed energy weapons. On the other side of the Atlantic, the United Kingdom has also released its own sixth-generation fighter concept in the form of the Tempest Project, currently under development by a consortium led by BAE Systems. Tempest is being designed to fly unmanned, and new sensor fusion technology development will allow the jet fighter to control swarms of drones to help with various mission requirements. The Tempest will also incorporate artificial intelligence, which will help it deflect potential cyber attacks. The jet is also rumored to be fitted with advanced laser weapon systems. And it's also possible that this aircraft could be battery powered instead of being powered by a jet engine. It could also end up having a hybrid propulsion system. Although an intriguing concept, it's doubtful that such a propulsion system will be ready for action when the jet aircraft enters service in 2035. 
The Tempest program is also developing a new information sharing capability known as cooperative engagement capability. This will allow the jet to share information recorded by its sensors with other aircraft or ground support to better coordinate attacks. Another amazing advance is the pilot's helmet-mounted display that will create a virtual cockpit using augmented reality technology. While sixth-generation fighters will mostly feature some form of unmanned capability, it's important to note that removing the human factor completely from the equation inherently comes with its own problems. Various technological limitations can hamper the operational capabilities of an unmanned platform, such as communication delays, its inability to perform complex combat maneuvers during dogfights, and also the risk of being hijacked by a cyber attack. This is one of the major problems with unmanned systems, which became painfully evident to the United States in 2011 when Iran was able to bring down its advanced stealth drone, the RQ-170 Sentinel, being operated by US Air Force and the Central Intelligence Agency to gather intelligence over the region. While these countries are focusing on unmanned platforms for their sixth generation fighters, Russia, on the other hand, is developing its next generation of fighter to be a hypersonic stealth interceptor. The Mikoyan MiG-41 project is being designed to become an interceptor of hypersonic missiles currently in development by the Western countries by carrying a multifunctional long-range interceptor missile system MPKRDP, that will dispense several sub-missiles in order to increase the chance of intercepting hypersonic weapons. The aircraft will feature ramjet engines to achieve speeds of Mach 4 Plus and according to some reports will have the capability of flying at the edge of space, although these are not yet confirmed. The aircraft will also feature advanced artificial intelligence, which will help manage the pilot's workload during various flight regimes. That's all we have for now. If you'd like to keep up to date with all things military, click on the subscribe button and turn on notifications, and you'll be the first to know when a new video arrives. Thanks for watching.